in the second book of the Great Commission series, we provide other manuscripts which have been part of that collection which has forever been lost, forgotten, and forbidden to public consideration. And specifically, we provide within this manuscript the Gospels of both Nicodemus and Bartholomew, which describe in greater detail Christ's descent down into Sheol and his fulfillment of the promise to free Adam and his descendants from the bondage of hell. And there are other texts also included in this collection which complete the book of Acts in a manner that you cannot find anywhere else. And so the first two books of the Great Commission are focused on the Acts and the Apostles, uh, the Acts and the Gospels of the Apostles, and the third book, which we will share with you later, is on the end time apocalypses. Hope you enjoy. If ancient illustrations of faith, which both testify to God's grace and tend to man's edification, are collected in writing, so that by the perusal of them, as if by the reproduction of the facts, as well God may be honored, as man may be strengthened, why should not new instances also be collected that shall be equally suitable for both purposes, if only on the ground that these modern examples will one day become ancient and available for posterity, although in their present time they are esteemed of less authority. And we therefore, what have we heard and handled, declare also to you, brethren and little children, that as well you who were concerned in these matters may be reminded of them again to the glory of the Lord, that you who know them by report may have communion with the blessed martyrs, and through them with the Lord Jesus Christ, to whom be glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. While, says she, we were still with the persecutors, and my father, for the sake of his affection for me, was persisting in seeking to turn me away and to cast me down from the faith, Father, said I, do you see, let us say, this vessel lying here to be a little pitcher or something else? And he said, I see it to be so. And I replied to him, Can it be called by any other name than what it is? And he said, No, neither can I call myself anything else than what I am, a Christian. After a few days, we were taken into the dungeon, and I was very much afraid because I had never felt such darkness. Oh, terrible day! Oh, the fierce heat of the shock of the soldiery! Because of the crowds, and the dungeon became to me, as it were, a palace, so that I preferred being there to being elsewhere. I saw a golden ladder of marvelous height reaching up even to heaven, and very narrow, so that persons could only ascend it one by one, and under the ladder itself was crouching a dragon of wonderful size, who lay in wait for those who ascended. I said, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, he shall not hurt me. I went up and I saw an immense extent of garden and in the midst of the garden, a white haired man sitting in the dress of a shepherd of large stature, milking sheep and standing around were many thousand white robed ones. And he raised his head and looked upon me and said to me, thou art welcome daughter and at the sound of their voices I was awakened, and I immediately related this to my brother, and we understood that it was to be a passion, and we ceased henceforth to have any hope in this world. The procurator then delivers judgment on all of us and condemns us to the wild beasts, and we went down cheerfully to the dungeon. And being set free, we at length saw the first boundless light, this is what the Lord promised to us. We have received the promise. Moreover, there in the pleasure garden, four other angels appeared, brighter than the previous ones, who, when they saw us, gave us honor and said to the rest of the angels, Here they are, here they are, with admiration. And the angel said to us, Come first, enter and greet your Lord. And in the midst of that place, we saw it as were a hoary man sitting, having snow white hair and with a youthful countenance, and his feet we saw not. And on his right hand and on his left were four and twenty elders, and behind them a great many others were standing. 
we entered with great wonder and stood before the throne and the four angels raised us up and we kissed him and he passed his hand over our face and the rest of the elders said to us let us stand and we stood and made peace and the elders said to us enjoy and i said perpetua you have what you wish and she said to me thanks be to god that joyous as i was in the flesh i am now more joyous here